Okay, so we have um, our next part two here of the antiderivatives, but if um, you we didn't have a whole lot of um, people at the lesson, so I'm probably not going to do any live lessons unless I get more interest. Um, I know everybody's got really busy, scattered schedules, so I guess watching the videos is is probably going to be your best bet. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more, a little more difficult examples with fractions and other difficult things in them, but they're really not too bad. It's just um, a little extra arithmetic. So we're taking the antiderivative, and I'll say again that the antiderivative is also known as taking the integral, which is that symbol in the front there. And what you are doing is you are given a derivative, and that's what the dx is for, is telling you that this uh, expression here is a derivative of something. And the integral is telling you, well, find out what that original equation was. So that's what we're doing. And the process is, if you have x to some exponent, you are going to add 1 to that exponent and then put that new thing on the bottom as a denominator. That's all there is to it. So here I go. I'm going to be adding 1 to each of these exponents. I don't really have to fix anything. They all have x's with exponents because that's the way you want it to be. So I can just start taking the integral. I can take the antiderivative. And the 3 doesn't change. The constant out front does not change. And the new exponent is 3 halves. And I have to put it over 3 halves. So we got a little bit of simplifying to do after. I'm just going to go ahead and take care of each one, and then I will fix it after. So the next one will be 2x to the 5 thirds over 5 thirds. The next one will be plus 4 x to the negative 1 over negative 1. The next one 3x to the 1 half over 1 half. See it's not so bad. We are going to add plus c at the end but we're going to wait until we simplify everything first. Now when you simplify and you have fractions it's like copy, change, flip. I am dividing by a fraction, so I'm going to flip the fraction and multiply it. So this is what it's going to look like. I am going to have, and I'm going to put it out front so that it's next to the coefficient. So I am going to have 2 thirds times 3x to the 3 halves. Then I am going to have 5 thirds times x to the 5 thirds, uh, sorry, 3 fifths. flip it. Three-fifths x to the five-thirds. Minus, for the negative one on the bottom, four x to the negative one. I'm just going to leave that for now. And plus two times three x to the one-half. Now I'm going to simplify one more time because those threes can cancel, and this will just be 2x to the 3 halves, and that is a plus there. So plus 3 fifths x to the 5 thirds, that just stays. This one, you can change this to 4 over x if you would like, or you can leave it x to the negative 1. Uh, plus 6 to x to the 1 half, and you can change that to the square root if you want but you can just leave it as well, and plus c. So this is the general solution. Remember, this is a family of numbers. The plus c at the end is some num any number. We don't know which number it is because we didn't see the original equation. And whenever there's a constant at the end and you take the derivative, it goes away. We're going to figure out that later today. That's today's lesson. All right, so this next problem I am going to fix this denominator is shared by the two things on top. So I'm going to rewrite this. This is the integral of x over x to the 1 half plus the integral of 1 over x to the 1 half. 
And I can fix this one again, so I'm going to do that because that is really just x to the 1 half because it would be x 1 minus a half is a half. So, and then, and then this one I'm also going to fix so that it's easier to take the um, integral of it, and that will be x to the negative 1 half. So here are the two things that now I can work with. I can work with x and an exponent. That's how you want to get your functions to be. Now that I'm going to go ahead and apply the rule. So when I apply the rule, I'm going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. I am adding 1 to each of these to take the actual integral. And that means I am going to have x to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus x to the 1 half over 1 half. I'll put my plus c at the end after I fix these because this is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 2 x to the 1 half plus c. I hope this is making sense with the flipping and everything. You're going to have to do a bunch of these. You can't get away from the fractions. The last one is actually one of the easiest. It may look difficult because you're like, oh no, I see trig. But if you can remember what 1 over cosine changes into. Anybody remember? Raise your hand. That's right. It's secant. So I am going to change this to the integral of secant squared. And I think I already see somebody raising their hand to tell me that they know what the antiderivative of secant squared is. You're right. It's tangent. Don't forget your plus C. All right, uh, this next I'm going to skip because we basically did everything on the previous slide. Um, if we were in class, I would have you do this. You have it in front of you. You can do it if you want, and um, you'll be you're free to uh, compare answers with each other or with me later. This is what we want to get to today. Uh, the Finding the C. So, so far we have been finding the general solution, which is with the plus C. Now we're going to find a particular solution that actually has a number instead of C. But the only way we can find that is if we are given an initial condition. Like we know that this function, this works for this function. That's what this is. So what we're going to do first is find the general solution. Just take the antiderivative normally, which this is a pretty easy one. So I am going to do the plus 1 thing, and that's a 1 there. So this is going to be 2x squared over 2 minus, and when it's a constant, you just put x on it because it was x to the 0, and I went through that before. So if you have a constant, you just put x on it. Uh, because if you took the derivative of negative 2x, it would be negative 2. So there you go. All right, so this is, oh, let me fix it first, x squared minus 2x plus c. Don't forget the plus c because that is the point we are going to be solving for that. And we'll go ahead and say that this equals y. We could say f of x, whatever you want to say. But this is a function. So what we are going to do is we are going to plug in 1 for x and 2 for y. Done this before, and then we're going to solve for c. So that means I'm going to have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus c equals 2. Not equals 0 because they're giving us what y is for 1. So it's nothing like maxes or mins. Get those out of your head. I'm sure they're already up. Okay, so we have 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. We have negative 1 plus c equals 2, so c equals 3. Once you have your c, you just plug it back in to the original function. y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. That's it. That's all you got to do. We now have a complete particular function. So I'm going to do one, maybe two more of these just to make sure it's okay. So we're going to find the particular solution. Uh-oh, it's e to the x. You know that's no big deal. Uh, that satisfies this initial condition. Okay, so let's take the antiderivative of e to the x. 
Well, it's e to the x. So I'm going to say y equals e to the x plus c. Because I didn't have to simplify, I don't have to do any exponent magic or anything. That's it. Now I am going to plug in 0 for x and 3 for y. So 3 equals e to the 0 plus c. Anything to the 0 is 1, so 3 equals 1 plus c. So c equals 2. That means your final function is y equals e to the x plus 2. So easy, not bad. One more. So for this function here, I'm going to take the antiderivative again. It's very similar to the last one. It's got different numbers, so I'm going to see if it's any different. Um, so I am going to be adding 1. So that's 4x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. Oh, let me fix that. 2x, so y equals 2x squared plus 2x plus c. And I'm going to plug in 1 for x and 8 for y. 8 equals 2 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1. They usually do give you pretty easy numbers for these. So I have 8 equals 2 plus 2 plus c. So c equals 4. So my final answer, y equals 2x squared plus 2x plus 4. That's one of the ones I would have had you do by yourself. The last thing I'm going to show you is a double derivative, second derivative. Basically, you just go through the process twice. I want to go ahead and show it to you because it is going to be like a bonus problem. And some of you might want to do it. So here we go. We are going to take the integral of x to the negative 3 halves dx. So that means I am going to be adding 1 pretty easy so far. Just the simple derivative. So y, now this is the first derivative. We are finding the first derivative first, and then we'll find the original function. So the first derivative is going to be x to the negative 1 half over negative 1 half. And before I add the plus c, I'm going to do, simplify this. So negative 2 x to the negative 1 half plus c. Okay, now I'm going to plug in first derivative um, part there, uh, initial condition. Okay, so I'm going to plug in, so y derivative is 2 and x is 4. And I'm going to solve for c. 4 to the negative 1 half is 1 half. The square root of 4 is 2, 1 over 2. Okay, 1 over 2 times negative 2 is negative 1. So this is 2 equals negative 1 plus c, so c equals 3. Plug it back in. y, first derivative y, is negative 2 x to the negative 1 half plus 3. Great, new function. Take the antiderivative again. So I am going to now take the antiderivative integral of this. So that means plus 1 here. So that means the original y is negative 2 x to the 1 half over 1 half plus 3x plus c. I'm going to go back to the top with this as I simplify. So that means that is negative 4x to the 1 half plus 3x plus c. I am going to plug in 0 and 0, and that happens a lot. If I plug in 0 for y and I plug in 0 for these x's, that means c equals 0. So that's how easy this was. y equals negative 4x to the 1 half plus 3x plus 0. Don't even have to write it. You're done. If you would like to try that second uh, double antiderivative, be my guest. Um, it works out pretty similarly easily. It's got the e to the x. Those are always pretty easy. I would say they're even easier than the fractional exponents. 
Then you have uh, this homework and 51 is a bonus. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.